The next one is uh, the obliques. So now that we have our straight, our A, P, or P, A image, if you shot your first picture P, A, or um, excuse me, A, P, both of your obliques are going to be posterior obliques. Keep it consistent. Don't shoot your straight one this way and then roll them around and do your obliques on the front. Just keep it consistent, okay? If you shoot your first rib picture P, A, because their area of pain is on the anterior, do your obliques as AOs, anterior obliques. You need both obliques. <clears throat> now, a lot of people, I know there's confusion. Like they say, well, okay, so I'm doing my RPO, but then they roll them up and they like, they want to center on the left side for the LPO. You're still centering on the side of interest. The reason that we need both obliques, whether it's RPO, LPO, or RAO, LAO, you have to do both centered to the side of interest. And this is why. On the RPO, we are going to lay out the right ribs. So we'll see what we call the axillary aspect of the rib, kind of the angle on the front side. So when I roll up into an RPO, my ribs get laid out, so they kind of get fanned out. But what we also need to see is kind of the posterior aspect on this side. So you have to see on this RPO, we want to see right up to the spine. This lays them out. Now on the other side, when we roll up into an LPO, we don't care about the left side of the ribs. We want to see the posterior aspect of the right side. Because when I roll into an RPO, we see the axillary. We kind of see from like the angle forward and we lay that out. But where did the posterior go here? It's hidden behind the spine. So both obliques centered on the side of interest. Your your RPO for the right side will lay them out, but it'll hide the posterior aspect. That's why we have to do the LPO centered on the right side. We now see posterior aspect, which is where both your articulations are located. So two obliques along with just the straight AP or PA. That is your upper rib series. One other thing I want to say about those obliques is it's an average of 45 degrees. We learned that oblique ribs are a 45 degree. Well, it kind of depends on body habitus, just like with a lot of the angles we use. If a patient has a very narrow thorax, their ribs are going to really curl around. You're going to need a lot more oblique to lay those out. Otherwise, we end up getting this funny little curl at the end, and you can't see the entire rib. So if they have a very, very thin thorax, not very deep front to back, you might need a little bit more angle to lay those out. Whereas a patient who's very barrel chested, their angle is a lot less, so you don't need quite as much. If you roll them up to a 45, you're really going to overshadow a lot of this posterior rib. So kind of use your judgment on that. A 45 is a nice average, but if they're thin, go a little more. If they're really barrel chested, you go a little bit less. So just kind of keep that in mind. <clears throat> but always know when you're shooting for your obliques, your, put your side of interest closest to the board, so like an RPO for right ribs, but you'll also do an LPO centered to the right side. And you still want to center kind of midway in between collimate in. We don't need to see this left side. Uh, one other thing that happens with rib series, particularly on the obliques and particularly on upright pictures with women, we get breast tissue right in the middle of the picture. I have a lot of examples I'll give you guys to go look at later, but if there's breast tissue coming around, it will literally come around and obscure like this. I mean, it is, and it's magnified because it's the upper breast tissue. And so it looks huge and it's really dense and you can't see about two thirds of the anatomy that you're trying to see. Have them move their breast tissue. It's okay to say that word. It's okay to have them do that. It's always the one furthest away. It's, yeah, so if, it, if we're looking for my right ribs, you turn up, the right one gets out of the way, but the left one is going to hang in the middle of the picture. So you kind of up and out. I usually have them do both, yep, and fingertips. And if you have, if you have some fingertips up here, it's okay. You know, it's, it's, that's better than having this giant breast shadow 
covering the entire image. Um, well, actually, I might have an example we'll look at in a little bit. But please try to, and if you notice that on an x-ray, just repeat it. You know, it's okay to have a reject and just say, you know, obscured anatomy or so, artifact, whatever. But you've, you've got to repeat it because that is truly an artifact. So get those out of the way. And it's most commonly on, sometimes on the straight ray, which actually is kind of nice when you do the PA because you can push them up against the board. But on those obliques, that's really when it becomes critical. So breast tissue up and out. Any questions on an upper rib series? PA chest, a straight ray, and two obliques. And you talked about the obliques in class. You talked about that's, you're at the same like centering, but on the obliques up just a little bit higher. Well, it depends. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so straight ray right here. Watch what happens when I roll up. We get to center lower because this, this is now closer. When I roll up this way, you have to go up. You have to center higher. So that is, that's a, a very good point is you always want to center at about T7. That level will vary, not because your patient's getting shorter or taller, but because of magnification. So if you roll closer, you'll have to come down a little bit and when you roll up you'll probably have to raise it a little bit otherwise you usually will miss that kind of first rib um, but just remember put your side of interest closest to the board wherever your BB is after your PHS stick that side up against the board and leave it there shoot a straight both obliques okay if it's a bilateral series 72 inches you should be able to get them all on one um, what sometimes happens if they're really wide, you might have to go crossways. Okay, go crossways, get at least first rib as far as you can, and then when you do your lower ribs, you'll get the rest of them. But it's, I've had people say, well, I, you know, at 72 inches, and, you know, I have these big patients, I'm shooting all these pictures, just go crossways, get as much as you can on a crossways, and then we'll lay them down and do the rest of them. So it, it shouldn't be an issue. Um, Okay, so those four pictures you will do on every series every time, correct? There's no excuse to not do those four pictures unless the patient can't stand. That's the only reason you would not take those. It's never okay to say, well, their pain was so low we didn't need those. No, you will always do the upper ribs, no matter what, okay? Cardiac involvement, pneumos, we're going to get the entire series standing up. So four pictures standing always. Now, if... Based on this first picture, if this BB is well above the diaphragm, that's all you have to do, those four pictures. If your BB on the PA chest is anywhere near this diaphragm, anywhere near it, slightly above it, on it, below it, even if your BB was right here, that's close to the diaphragm. You will lay them down and do some more pictures. Okay, this has kind of been an issue. Yes, we can see the lower ribs on this picture, but lower ribs have their own rules. We can't see them well on this picture. So even though we can see this one rib where the BB is, we all know that rib injuries sometimes are located in areas close to that. So anywhere within this region, we're going to do a lower rib series. So you do your first four. Bring them over and lay them down on the table. Now we have three more pictures to do. The same three pictures we did with the upright. Okay, the upright, we had a PA chest and three upper pictures. We do those same three pictures as a lower rib series. When you're doing lower ribs, they're going to be recumbent. Now, an exception here that's different from standing is it doesn't matter if the BB's in the front or the back, you will lay them on their back. You're not going to make a patient lay face down with their head in the pillow on the table so that you can get the BB closer to the, the bucky. So all of your recumbents will be on their back, which makes it kind of easy. Lay them on their back. What do you think our first picture is? A straight ray, an AP, a supine, whatever you want to call it, center to the area of interest. Mm -hmm.